Let's now think about what we have to do in order to test a very little change inside our AWS Lambda. Well, we made our change. In order to test it, we need to deploy the Lambda or the whole stack. Then we need to invoke it. And then we have to check the CloudWatch logs like we see in the console in case something doesn't work as we wanted. We see the problem, then we have to repeat the process all over and all over again. This is a very time consuming process and you may wonder, is there a better way in which we can get instant feedback for our small code changes? Yes, there is. And uh, in this lecture, we will see how we can use VS Code to debug AWS lambdas. If you're using another editor like IntelliJ, I will also point to a uh, documentation regarding how you can debug your TypeScript code using IntelliJ. But let's move to our workspace and see how we can debug our TypeScript code. Well, we are in our workspace and very important, if we want to make this to work, we need to have the TS node library installed. Make sure that you have this library installed. And uh, after we, you have this library installed, we can go to the debug view. This is the one right here on, on VS Code. And then since we don't have any debug configuration created yet, I will click create a launch.json file and I will select Node.js. You can select anything because we will start from scratch with this file. And as you can see, this created a new folder inside our project, .vs code folder and a file called launch.json. Very important when you are configuring this, make sure that you are making this configuration at the root of your project. And when I mean root, I mean inside the project that contains your package.json file. Otherwise, you will have, you will get some misleading errors and it won't work. Well, let's configure this launch.json file and create a simple configuration right here. I will just maybe delete this uh, configuration because we will do it from scratch. So the type of our configuration is node. That's great. Then we need to specify the request and the request is launch. We can specify then a name for our configuration and uh, this configuration will run the currently open file. So I will say here debug local file. You can write anything you want right here. Then we need to specify some, some runtime argument arguments and this is the TypeScript specific part here first of all we need to run so here I will say minus r and then the second argument is ts minus node slash register this is just for a simple TypeScript configuration then we will specify the arguments and the arguments are like we can specify the relative file so here I will say relative file and then when we will uh, have a file open this configuration will directly run it so we won't bother with uh, passing uh, paths to file in to files inside our configuration and basically this is it this is the whole configuration you need to debug typescript code but since we want to debug also aws code there's one more point which we need to make and that is the environment well, here we have to specify at least a global variable that will indicate the AWS region that we have. So here I'll say AWS region. Be careful for typos. And here you can specify your region. My region is EU West 1. All right. And this is our whole configuration. That's it. We can now use this configuration if we didn't have any typos. You can check it uh, at the resources of this lecture, this configuration. All right. Well, the next step is to configure a way in which we are invoking our Lambda. Currently, we are not calling it from anywhere. So let me create a new folder. I will call this folder test. And inside this test folder, I will create a new file. Let me call just launcher.ts. It really doesn't matter what uh, you're calling this. This is just a point in which I want to call this Lambda. So this Lambda is called hello.ts and the file name is handler. So here I was called the handler and the VS code is kind enough to make the import for me. This is our handler. Well, our handler inside here 
needs an API gateway proxy event and a context. Of course, we can't just fake everything about these objects, but since we are just trying and we are not really reading anything from them, we can just pass inside our handler some empty objects like this and like this. And basically that's it. If you still have like typing uh, errors as I have right here, I can just call a cast as any like this and as any like this. We just want to debug our files. Well, basically that's it. Now we can go into our handler and put breakpoints. And uh, you can see here with this function, we are making a list buckets command call. Well, this function will uh, receive some uh, buckets. Let's see if this is working. In order to check if this is working locally, I will put a breakpoint right here and then I will go to our debug view. And now I have an entry right here called debug local file. I will select it and then I need to go inside my hello dot inside my launcher. This is the one because this is the file we will execute. So I have this uh, on focus and I call the I press the green button. If everything is okay and yes, it is okay. I'm uh, hitting the breakpoint and uh, I this is the greatest view for a programmer the view in which you have the best development experience because you get instant feedback for your code. That's great. As you can see, here I even have a list bucket result. So here I can get the information directly from AWS. So I don't have to deploy this to AWS to see how it works. Well, if you wonder why this is working, this is working because we have a configured locally and administrator access in the inside the CLI. So we don't have to authenticate in any way. This will directly go to our account and list our buckets because yes, it has administrator access. Well, one last point. If you are, for example, using uh, the AWS account from your work maybe, and you don't have an AWS administrator configured locally, here inside the in environment variables, you can also add like your credentials or like your session tokens from AWS and it will still work just fine. Well, we saw in this lecture a great way in which we can receive instant feedback for, for our modifications inside our code. This is a great tool and we will use it a lot in the next sections about uh, DynamoDB queries when we will make a lot of changes in order to get the right response from our uh, database.